Hello from Keyworth, I'm Jair Stays. And I'm Fletcher Sharp. And we're here to talk about a game that, frankly, is disappointing for LaRouge fans. Fletcher, it seemed like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Yeah, really windy today. We knew it'd be wet. Didn't know it'd be as windy. 28-mile-per-hour uh, winds really affect the way that both teams play. Indy likes to keep the ball on the ground, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. But Detroit likes to put the ball in the air, so any ball that gets in the air goes right into the supporting section. And, yeah, you could tell that teams were trying to adjust a little bit. Uh, Detroit didn't really change their game plan until late, and by then it was kind of too late to come back as they were already down one nothing. Yeah, the offense was anemic today. Seemed, there seemed to be some more life when Skage Simonson got on the pitch. I was surprised he didn't start, actually. Yeah, I mean, typically you, you reward the people who get you a win. You try to keep the same lineup as possible. If someone's hurt, you know, maybe give them a break or something. You want to reward people for practice as well. I saw a formation change. They had four at the back. They typically don't ever play four at the back, so I wonder what must have happened there. Uh, but, yes, yeah, when Skage came on, the offense seemed to kind of come to life. Uh, unfortunately, it came to life when they were down a player. But, I mean, it still provided some spark to give some excitement at the end. And let's talk about discipline. Yazid Matthews is that player that was sent off. A lot of yellow cards today. The discipline just wasn't there for the squad. Yeah, uh, six yellow cards today, 67 all of last year, no red cards at all. Uh, Yazid picked up two yellows, which turned into a red. Uh, that's the first the USL championship. And the second foul it definitely was a yellow card. If it was me being slid into like that, I wouldn't want the call. Uh, you just can't do that. Like the referee showed early on, he's going to book for anything that's too too rough, too rough and tumble. And you got to adjust. You got to adjust to that. If you keep playing in a way where he can book you, you do your team a disservice. Uh, Reese Wood was playing great in the wing. Picked up a yellow card. He couldn't press anymore because he could get pick up another yellow card and get sent off. And it changes the way that you play. It's kind of if you are someone who kind of runs at the ball. Uh, ears pinned back, trying to attack the best way you can. Pick up a yellow card, you can't do that as much because the game's too long, and there's a chance you might pick up a yellow card too early on, another yellow card too early on, and you're doing your team a disservice after that point. But let's talk about that indie goal that put it one nothing. What happened there? Yeah, corner kick came in, uh, came in low because of the wind. A few players saw it coming, and instead of you know sweeping it out, mistimed it, and uh, Brian Raboyan was there, struck it into the back of the net. So RGV, Rio Grande Valley, comes to town April 1st. Uh, what are we thinking? What are we looking forward to? And uh, what changes need to be made, honestly? Uh, Set-piece defense. Uh, it's been the problem last year. I think back to a goal against Memphis where they had a nice free kick from around the half, field, half touch line, and they dinked it in and got a header into the net. And you would think coming into the new year, you're going to make some changes defensively that might happen. We still see here set pieces. Maybe they're not getting beat in the air. They're still getting beat. Uh, Rio Grande Valley, they're not a big team, but they like to press. Like All their forwards are around between 5'7 to 5'10, but they will all come at you and just press and keep the pressure there. If you're not producing on the offensive end, they can press you more because they don't have to worry about anyone going by them. So you got to like do some sort of set-piece training defensively. you got to work on getting the fluidity in the middle back. I'm assuming it won't be 28-mile-per-hour wins with hail, obviously, that game. But, like... It, it was not good offensively. Uh, they didn't really get any pressure on Odell, who honestly, in my opinion, is like bottom five keeper in the league. But he got a clean sheet, and he can say he got one at Keyworth, so you can't you can tip, his, tip your hat to him. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Simonson's basically going to have to play every minute this year, and we really need to be watching to see what the status of Ben Morris is. Yeah, uh, Skage is this year's Hopeno, where if he if he can play, if he's you know, a bit slowed, he needs to be out there. And yeah, with Yuzi having a red, he'll be out the next game. Uh, we need to hope that Ben Morris's visa issue is cleared so he can get back and play. Because if not, they're going to have to put someone who's not used to being a number nine forward up top and let them be in Yazid's role. 100%. I hope for a much better outcome. We're going to talk a lot more about this and other things on the Daily Detroit podcast on Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Fletcher Sharp. We'll see you around Detroit.